had uh, an external web service which is hosted on ArcGIS website. ArcGIS is a GIS software basically. They have exposed a map service. Uh, they return certain set of maps based on the data source you select. Uh, so we will start with this demonstration. We have written a code, a uh, piece of code. This ArcGIS client is a swing client and uh, this test ESRI that, that, that acts as the web service client. So we have done similar process. Uh, we went to ArcGIS site, we took the visitor, put it in NetBeans, generate client and then give the necessary parameters for method invocation. So there is a get map API. Uh, it requires certain uh, options to be given. You give the uh, you give uh, those options while invoking. So see uh, the x coordinate, y coordinate, radius, and data source. These are the parameters which are required. Uh, after that, you create particular data structure and the sport dot get best map is the API which you call. Data source is, uh, so there are certain data sets which are defined on RGIS website. For example, road data, data set, map data sets. You need to uh, select, you will see in the demonstration what are the different types of data sources available. So here we can see that you need to give uh, x coordinate, let's say 20. Uh, y coordinate 50, radius of the circle 20. Now these are the different data sets which are available on RGIS site. Uh, this is a parameter to uh, get best map call. Okay. So let's select something. Get map. Now when you click on map, it is actually contacting that uh, web service and trying to get map. That's why. So this. So UI is freezing is a proof that it is contacting a web service and it's taking some time to get back. So we can see that the map is coming here. It's not that much clear though. It's still a map. So essentially these are standard maps which are provided by this web service. So like this is roads of the world. So arcweb and dot roads dot world. Another one is Globe Explorer. So these are static maps which what are served. Is, is scale of these here 1 to 30 No, scale is written down. Mm, uh, 1 inch is 0. No, no, 1 inch is 23 right, miles. Uh, right, no, we don't know. I mean, this is just a random web service that we picked up last night and we hit. So the details of the GIS data that's behind it, we don't know. We don't even care, frankly. No, no, right? scale of map is written. Point, uh, no, 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 that's not what he's asking. Uh, so we are not showing. The yeah. web service is obviously has map data in a database somewhere. Right? It is creating a map data out of the database and shipping the map. Yeah, sure. We didn't create a web service, we create a web service client. We created it exactly like you created a web service client yesterday in the lab. No difference. We got a WSDL file from that website. Right? We are not going to go through that here. It will require about half an hour, 45 minutes. It's not going to be possible to walk through that. No, this is a web service. There are thousands of web services out there. We cannot go through every one of them. So, <coughs> so you, you want Visual URI? The Visual URI we can give you for this web server. Ah, this, just what I think we can give. Okay, how we, we can generate this? What are the difficulties? Suppose we will generate, we will face some difficulties. Like connection or something. Yeah, so one of the things we can talk so, about is IIT Bombay network has a proxy. Right? So any HTTP call, remember this is SOAP over HTTP and any HTTP calls are actually going to the proxy. So configuring the proxy for Glassfish was an issue that we, uh, you know, Siddharth and Vinay ran into yesterday. Right? So they have gotten around it with some kind of uh, network uh, skullduggery which I am not going to go into here. But, you know, assuming that the proxy situation is something that can be handled independently, this won't be an issue. 
if you take a look at this code, again this is similar. Uh, you give a location to create new web service client. You you have the visitor location. If you see web service references, is it global weather? This is a web service client which we have created using visitor. Uh, you create new service, you create new port. Now we have given a static code JFK, which is uh, airport code for John F. Kennedy Airport. Yeah. In New York. Uh, uh, then you call web service like port dot get weather report. Uh, we are we are printing just relative humidity. The result data set that comes back is a huge structure which has lots of information in it. You know, what's the color of the sky at that place? What's the temperature? Humidity, precipitation levels. Everything is given. We are only printing one of it. If you take a look at this, relative humidity is 43. So there are certain set of airport codes which are listed on this website. So we'll this, try with something this, else. This is actually the site at which we got that information from. Developer.capeclear.com. He would do would uh, this app put in an application for what we are just calling a water project. It could be anything. Uh, we are allowing them to select a certain district from which this application is going to be submitted. There is only a couple of choices in the database right now. This is actually getting an Oracle spatial database sitting on another server somewhere. right? Um, so they are going to submit this application. Done that. Okay. Now what is happening is that this submission is actually invoking a Beeple process. You can go to the next screen then. So this is uh, invoking a Beeple process that will kick off a workflow for dealing with this application that has just been submitted. Right? So it is going to go to multiple sources, two sources, the Department of Land Planning and the Department of Road Planning, let's say. Okay, the first, now this uh, workflow involves human interaction, as you can see. Right? So the first step is that uh, the people sent off a message to a web service. The web service is now going to interact with a human eventually through a website that we have set up, which is the Department of Land Planning web page. The human has to give certain input to it and only then will the people process continue. Right? And as a next step, it will push it to the next department. Now the human decides that he wants to actually look at some data uh, before they can make a decision as to whether they want to approve or reject this application. Right? So we are going to go off and get data from uh, what is called a WFS server. Uh, WFS is a web service that has been defined by a standards body called OGC, the Open Geospatial Consortium. Right? Um, and so we are going to get some data relating to this district for which an application has been filed. Right? So this person looks at the data, so there is some data about the kind of habitation uh, and the hydrography information for that district that is available and then they decide to let us say in this case accept. Now obviously they could accept or reject and if they rejected a different path in the workflow would be taken. Now this is where the human has interacted with the workflow to say, you know, okay, this is the decision that I am giving you, now do whatever you want. And then it turns out that the workflow is now going to pick that decision and uh, continue the workflow. It needs another decision by another department, which is some state road development authority, again fictitiously named in this case. Um, and these people also would need to go look at some data for this. <coughs> so let's this is going to go off to another data source to get road data, right? A uh, <coughs> little more data here. So this is going to bring back spatial data as well. The latency on this is a little long. So you can see the spatial coordinates. This is coming off of an Oracle spatial database. Um, and suppose it, this data is really not meant for human consumption as such. So uh, we are going to view this data as a map. Go all the way down. Okay, all right. So we are going to request that this view, data be viewed as a map. There is another server called a WMS server or a web map server that is out there, which is another uh, web service for GIS services that we have built. And it is going to return the data as a map that is now going to be displayed. And then this uh, human being who is viewing the map will make any appropriate decision. Uh, based on that, that was the road data that you saw and he could decide to accept or reject as well. If you decide to accept, then this decision is now has been submitted to the workflow, and the workflow now moves ahead, and we can see the stat the applicant who submitted the application in the first place 
can be checking on the status of the application through a web page that you set up at any point in time. And it shows that this request was accepted because the entire work was complete. Now, if, the, if we check the status of the application at some intermediate point in time, it would, be, it would just say that it's pending, right, till the work was complete. So this just gives you an example of a business process in a e-government kind of a context. Um, the context can be anything, but this happens to be for a DST project that we have here at ID Right? So can we just take a look at the people briefly? <coughs> So it looks somewhat similar to what you did yesterday, right? So it has a, a if branch that is in there, but it also has a, oh, this doesn't have the concurrency part of it. Is there a flow here? The, there is a flow here as well, which is two things happening simultaneously. Uh, but very similar to the people that you saw yesterday, but it is in the context of a slightly more realistic application than concatenating random numbers of strings that you are doing, right? So for those of you who, who felt that that was not too realistic and this is a little more realistic. So this has been, uh, this was demoed to the Department of Science and Technology last week, uh, last week, week after last, week before last. Um, and they are actually planning to use similar technologies in integrating multiple spatial data sources uh, for uh, decentralized planning purposes. So I have given the reference to that project to her as well because she's interested from NIC. So that's all we have as far as the demo. Yes, we might just Pardon? Connection the first the first one is Which which one? Which index? So there are many web applications that were developed as part of this. The application web app is the initiator of the the workflow. <laughs> one of the web applications, right? Uh, then there's the uh, roads department and the planning department web applications that we also do. Every one of them has DSP. Yeah. All the web app has DSP. First, when we are running the first page, that's all. We go back to the browser. The application is not what the project, okay, open it in NetBeast. It's very similar to the web page that you had yesterday, the index.dsp that you had yesterday. Where is DSP? The data. This is a web page that's kicking off a workflow. The workflow is interacting with web services which is connecting to Oracle. You will not see that code here in the web page. It has nothing to do with the web page. The web service code, right, for the roads department or the planning department is contacting a another web service called degree. Right? That's the server. That will talk to Oracle, give the data back. So that's the path that is being followed. So there's a GIS server that is sitting there which talks to the database. There's no direct database code that we have written here. We don't have to because there is a web server. That service is what we are using. The degree service we are going to take. Yeah. We are just displaying the data here. Connection pooling is being provided by the application server for us. We don't explicitly manage the connection pool. We only have to configure a connection pool on an app server. So Glassfish has been configured with some default connection pool. When Glassfish comes up, if you take a look at the console, it says, you know, starting so many threads, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so that is part of the connection pooling configuration that it is reading in that one. So we don't have to, no developer would have to manage configuration pooling. This is part of the infrastructure capability, always. Web services that we have also discussed the big code. Can we discuss now what are the various issues that may arise when we have web services environment and cross platform, cross language scenarios? 
Okay. Um, web services are meant for open environments, right? So if you, it's basically used in this integration scenario where you could have many different legacy applications, right? Coming, each application being built with different technologies. So for example, you could have a, uh, a cakes environment, uh, you could have a tuxedo environment, you could have an Oracle Financials application, you could have an SAP application, you could have all these applications existing in an environment. Um, and so this is this goes back to the EAI thing that we talked about earlier. So what you would typically do is that you would have these different applications talk to each other. So for example, let's suppose you want to have a purchase order, right? A purchase order is typically part of the Oracle Financials application. If you were, you know, it's part of that. Um, and the purchase order is going to go off to a list of vendors. Some it's going to go off to some vendors. But the Oracle Financial application has to interact with inventory, which is not part of Oracle Financial. Let's say you have SAP ERP, right? If you have SAP, then your inventory is ma being managed by SAP. Um, so your financials and SAP now have to talk to each other in order to ensure to, when is a PO kicked off when the inventory level drops below some point of some raw material that you're using in manufacturing. Let's say. Right? So, in order for that to happen, these two applications have to talk to one another. Both are written using disparate technologies, different languages, APIs may be different, whatever. So, the question is, how do you make this happen? There are two ways. One is you can write a specific custom adapter from SAP to go to Oracle Financials. So, if I want to send a message to Financials saying, please issue a PO, I will write a custom adapter to go from SAP inventory to Oracle Financials. Right? So that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to wrap these in web services and expose them as web services, each one of them. So my Oracle Financials would be exposed as a set of web services and issue of PO would be a particular web service that, that I have there. And uh, now my SAP application can call out to Oracle Financials using standard web service calls that we've seen. Right? The, the advantage of this is that if I have 10 other different technologies and applications, let's say I have a CRM system which happens to be Siebel, right? Um, I have a billing application which happens to be Portal. There are all these different vendors out there, each one of which has built it in their own way, shape and form. Now, if every one of them is exposed as a web service, at least my technology that is used to hit all of this will now become common, right? So my interaction patterns will become grounded uh, uh, with a common base. Right? This is often also referred to as uh, an ESB out in the industry, an enterprise service bus, which does more than just routing functions. Right, So it will do transformation, it will do persistent queuing and so on. But it's it's not nothing great. That's, that's essentially what it's doing. Right? Enterprise service bus is taking a message that is given by one application and persistently keeping it, maybe transforming data because the data, uh, the uh, the data schemas may be different, so a customer may be known in one schema in one application, another schema in another application. So it will do a transformation based on certain XSLT rules that we have given it, and then it will route it to the appropriate place because it knows the locations of all the other web services that are on there. But as you say, web services are evolving, right? It's evolving technology. It's so always evolving still. So are there any restrictions, constraints with SOA as on today? I'm sure there are many restrictions and constraints. We saw uh, so the, the core specifications are reasonably solid. The core specifications being soft, WSDL and UDDI are reasonably uh, stable, right? Uh, the other sets of specifications like the ones we saw today morning, WS policy. Yeah. WS policy I think is also fairly stable, but the reliable messaging framework, transactions framework, etc are in some state of flux. They, are, they, they have one, at least one set of specifications out completely and there are products built to those specifications as well, but the specification may change in the future, which means the product may also change. Um, Sir, uh, primarily SIO, uh, the SOA is for developing application software. But Greg Mundes, one of the slides is thinking of heterogeneous uh, uh, system really the Computer system mm. and use uh, the compound and context sensitive. Mm. Is it an indication that SOA can also be used to at the system software level? Uh, most certainly, uh, system software level, I don't know what I mean, but 
whatever he was talking about, what was he talking about? He said that software itself would be context sensitive. Right? In other words, what is context sensitiveness? Is that it will be able to sense the surrounding environment in which the software is operating and react appropriately to that. Um, that can be done in a SOA environment. In fact, we have a research project here funded by Motorola that we are doing exactly that, building a context sensitive middleware for SOA using web services. Um, then heterogeneous, you know, SOA addresses the, uh, web services addresses the heterogeneity issue because it is a common platform or a standard. Um, and in fact, this example that I was just walking through also demonstrates how you deal with heterogeneity. Right? So you have SAP, you have SQL, you have different applications written using different languages, using different technologies which can all be made to talk to each other in a uniform, seamless way. That is addressing the heterogeneity issue at the software level. Heterogeneity issue at the hardware platform level is now no, is actually not much of a concern at all. Right? Because there are virtual machines that are already riding on top of this. Software rides on top of virtual machines. So you are kind of insulated from the specific instruction set of the hardware already. So I don't believe that's a concern. Um, so can SOA address what he's talking about? In fact, that's what he said, right? There will be web services as part of the platform. That's exactly what he said. So uh, SOA is a way of building applications, right? Applications could even refer to system software, but it is also a way of connecting applications that have already been built. So that's one thing that we have to keep in mind. Right? People connects applications. By itself, it's an application. But it also helps connect different applications. Right? It's, it's, it's doing that enterprise integration aspect of it. 